Greetings to all those who are confined behind the walls of their home, like me. Welcome to Grew with Portia, Quarant Told Edition. I'm your host, Portia Booker, and yes, this is my real name. Grew with Portia targets those who are curious, eager, and hungry for new information that can aid in their personal and professional development. Malcolm X once said, education is the passport to the future, but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Never stop learning. Be a sponge for the rest of your life. Before I jump into my topic for today, I want to introduce my guest. Welcome, Latasha Stone from Proper NAR. Welcome, Latasha. Hey, Portia. Thank you so much for having me today. Well, I thank you for joining me. I know that you're probably, you know, busy making skater gear for people. And, you know, <laughs> especially since it's summertime, people kind of want to get out. You know, the yes, whole nine yards. Everybody's getting back into it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Since this whole quarantine uh, series came through. So for our listeners who are not familiar with Proper Noir, I'm going to give a little background on who Latasha is. Latasha Stone is an artist, business owner, and skateboarder from Ohio. She combines her own original wild and colorful artwork into designs for skateboards, clothing, and prints. So welcome again, Latasha. I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Thank you. Me too. So all during August, National Wellness Month focuses on self-care, managing stress, and promoting healthy routines. Create wholesome habits in your lifestyle all month long and see how much better you feel. Research has shown self-care helps manage stress and promotes happiness. Whether you challenge yourself to a new yoga, pro, yoga, yoga pose or try a different spa treatment, make a small change and impact your health in positive ways. So, Latasha, what's kind of like your form of self-care? I know that probably your artwork is probably the majority for you. Yes, definitely. Um, art is my favorite form of self-care. It, um, it just gives me, like, a quick way to, like, relax and, like, unwind throughout the day. And then also, like, skateboarding, um, it's something that you can do by yourself. And you don't always have to be learning tricks. You can just be, you know, riding down the street, and it just gives you a chance to free your mind. And I'd also say just general self-care, like everybody needs like a spa day occasionally, just like go get a facial, relax, stuff like that. Just as, as a business owner, like you really have to like learn to like take care of yourself and just, you know, rest sometimes. Yeah, Latasha, I mean, go into that. As a business owner, people expect you to be on demand probably 24-7. Yes. Yeah, and, like, in my case, uh, people don't realize that it's, like, just me, like, wearing all the different hats of the business, so it's definitely important to just, like, set some time apart for yourself where you can just tune all that out and, and get some free time. Well, I think, too, people need to establish healthy boundaries, right? You know, as a business owner, you need that downtime to be creative as well, not just for your clients, but even for yourself like you said art is your life mm -hmm, exactly yeah and definitely like when you you have a bit business you have to learn how to divide the two because it's really easy to just get caught up in all like the business stuff that you're like forced to do and then you have to put like your your main uh creative outlet like on the back burner for a little bit so yeah. definitely important to separate that yeah, and see, that's sometimes the issue I have. I mean, I do this for, you know, it's not my nine to five job. I would love for it to be, but, you know, mm -hmm. even with producing and, you know, doing this uh, podcasting, I love storytelling and Maybe. I love the art of it. I love, you know, talking to people and learning about them, but also I have to, you know, set up those healthy boundaries myself because it can be addictive. You know, mm -hmm. that rush of like, oh my God, who am I going to interview next? Like, you know, what are they going to be like when I talk to them? And um, even, you know, when I'm curating questions for my guests, I'm like, oh my God, I like this question more than that one. Oh no, I have to eliminate mm -hmm. this question. Like, you know, so once again, setting those healthy boundaries can be challenging even for, you know, like people like me who are not a business mm -hmm. owner. So I, I think that's really important and, well, and in I, a way you are yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that <laughs> but it, it's you know especially now since everybody's at home mm -hmm. you know versus if COVID wasn't here people could be out 
with their friends or, you know, going on trips, going to see different things or attending events yet alone. Like I remember, mm -hmm. I want to say it was 2007 when they brought the do tour downtown. And mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to go and, you know, see all the different skateboarders and stuff. And I enjoyed it. But now it's like, you have to watch everything on YouTube. <laughs> right? Like, and then I'm sure it feels weird for the people that are competing also, because like, they're used to like the crowds and everything. And now it's just like them in the arena, like by themselves. I'm sure that like changes the energy for everything. Well, yeah, and sometimes it's hard to keep your energy high, especially mm -hmm. when, like... You, you need, know, like, people to pump you up. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm a social butterfly. I mean, I'm a Sagittarius. I have to have people interaction, <laughs> like... Yeah. But don't yeah, get me wrong. See, um, I'm, yeah, see, I'm, like, more of an introvert, so I, I don't mind this staying at home, but, like, it does like when, when you're required to stay at home it feels different than like staying home by choice yes i agree with that and see i'm an ambivert so mm -hmm. i like my social but also introverted time as well and it's it's mm -hmm. kind of weird it's kind of like that weird paradigm like well how can you <laughs> like you gotta balance it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean because for example when I'm producing or when I'm like working on questions and things like that, I like to be by myself. But then also like, I love being around other people at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can like bounce ideas off each other. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure, you know, with your artwork, you probably do like your best work when you're alone. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, long I stretches of time. <laughs> right especially now so let me ask you this Latasha did you feel more of a spark in your creativity when the country you know when kind of the United States shut down or did you kind of have like the same level um I definitely felt a spark just because I had so much free time and then like as an artist you're always kind of like inspired by the things that are going on around you and that kind of fuels your work as well so yeah, I definitely felt a increase in my creativity during this time. And I also um, got an iPad during this time, which has made my drawing like so much easier than the old way that I used to do it. So that's definitely influenced as well. Well, and then the newer iPads have like the new stylus, right? Where you can like draw yeah. and use different apps. Yeah, um, Procreate, yeah, that's what I use now. And I love it. Like. The, that pen is like so sensitive like it's amazing <laughs> wow I mean that's really cool my tattoo artist I believe shout out to uh wolf tattoos 216 that's my uh tattoo artist he's amazing well mm -hmm. he uses that same app like I've seen him do it um when I would go there and you know we'd be talking about my tattoo before you know we get to work and mm -hmm. I saw him like pull it up on that app and you know then he would maybe tweak it a little bit like I think I've seen him mm -hmm. print like two copies or something like one for mm -hmm. the um was it the tissue paper or like the tracing paper and then um another one I think for like his book you know of work mm -hmm. so it, it was just yeah it's it's so versatile I know I'm like man I'm gonna have to give me one now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Definitely. If you're in, into drawing, it's really good. See me, I'm a writer. I used to draw when I was a kid. And, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that, you know, drawing is one of those things that anybody can do, even if it's just mm -hmm. a little simple stick figure. Or yeah. um, like the, the letters, like when people would take the alphabet to make little um, intricate things, like, for example, an uh, S. Like calligraphy. Yeah. Like they take an S and make a rose or, you know, like an A and make, you know, I don't know, like mm -hmm. a, a house or something, you know. Oh, that sounds pretty. <laughs> I mean, just like, because <laughs> I know I can do it with an S, like I can make a rose using the letter S. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not like detailed, like some other people who, you know, have been drawing, you know, their whole life and stuff. So. 
Yeah. Yeah, and calligraphy is like very intricate. Like I'm not good at that at all. <laughs> well, I mean, according to like what I've seen on your website, I've seen some cool stuff with calligraphy. Oh, well, thank writing. you. Really? See, I like. I feel like I have like the worst handwriting. Like as an artist, people always like expect me to have this like beautiful signature, but like I have the worst handwriting ever. <laughs> <laughs> well. You figure now we live in a society where it's not like you're signing your signature at every place when you make a transaction. Yeah, definitely not as often as we used to have to. And then everything is electronic. You figure when you fill out a job application now online, they don't always have the signature thing where you can take your mouse and sign your name. Now they use right. either initials or you what you change the, the font to match mm -hmm. your quote unquote um signature. Right. You know. So I get it. I, I completely get it. I mean, I, I don't know. It's like things are just so different, but at the same time, we've come a long way, especially since a mm -hmm. lot of things such as art, like what you were saying with the, the Procreate app on the iPad, it's made your life a lot simpler, especially being a business owner. Yeah, definitely. I think um, uh, digital art has really changed like the whole art movement because it allows a lot of people that wouldn't have access to like all those art supplies and stuff to be able to make it look like they're using the same supplies. Like you can make stuff look like it's an oil painting now. Like you can make things look like they're watercolors now without having to like go to the store and finding like all these specific products to to make that like in real life and, and Latasha kind of dive into that a little bit so I know digital art it's made like you said things simpler and also made it more affordable for people who can't go to the store and spend I, I don't know art supplies prices but like you know 15 bucks on a certain color or something but mm -hmm. how does that kind of like impact the art industry especially for people who are you know like old-fashioned where they prefer just a simple sketchbook and all the colors um i i hear some negativity from those people that are like old-fashioned like that but um honestly i think it's a good thing um there's definitely like some drama around it that from people that like things to to stay the old way mm-hmm um, but yeah, I think it's, it's important to, I mean, it's, it's like a, a kind of big initial investment, but over time it definitely pays for itself. Cause like you go to the store and you got to pay like $15 for the canvas. Like sometimes depending on the size, it can be like a hundred dollars and then you, you pay like 400 for the iPad and then you can go on and create like thousands of and thousands of artwork so it definitely helps like art move at a faster rate too like um i feel like things trend for shorter amounts of time now like before when people had to like physically paint things like you would see something that somebody else did and maybe you were inspired by it you had to like take all this time to do it but now you have an ipad you see something you can just open that up right there and finish it and like upload it in, in like a couple hours and it's done yeah and, and that's cool like the convenience of it now versus you know back in the you know several years ago you had to take the time like you said to go to the store purchase all the supplies and then spend however many hours to make a similar replica of what you saw mm -hmm. so it, it's I don't see I'm an old fashioned person too, but I also appreciate the new age and digital art as well. Cause there's like mm -hmm. so I much. Think, yeah, I think both of them will be around for a long time because there's always gonna be people that prefer the old way and there there's still nothing that compares to just like going to an art gallery and like walking around and, and seeing that. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And that's kind of like where we're at now you go into different places and you see mostly digital art even even down to mm -hmm. photography mm -hmm. it's indeed a cool thing so 
you know, what, what sparked your interest in learning how to skateboard? Well, I played all the skate games as a kid, and then, um, like, my neighbors that I hung out with, skate, with skateboarded, and then, um, like, at, in school, that was just, like, kind of the group that I fell into. Instantly, it makes me think of that song by Avril Lavigne, Skater Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, that came out, like, when I was in high school, and, yeah, I totally went through that phase like I don't, I don't know if you remember how like she used to wear ties but I, I was totally that girl that would like wear ties like she did in that music video <laughs> yeah that's so cool so little embarrassing story for me mm-hmm. my first time well I, I kind of got into skateboarding too from like the Tony Hawk games and I used to watch them and play them mm-hmm. um, and I, I love doing it you know but when I actually attempted to skateboard, that was an epic fail <laughs> in its own. So my cousin mm-hmm. had a skateboard <clears throat> growing up. She's a couple years younger than me. And she left her skateboard at the end of the steps in our backyard. And of mm-hmm. course me, I'm in a rush to go down the steps so I can play basketball. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't realize that the skateboard had become a moving step. So, oh, no. <laughs> so I get to the bottom of the steps. My feet went from under me like I was slipping on butter and whop, bam, down on the ground. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and that was the first and last time I ever rode a skateboard. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's that's understandable. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think uh, getting hurt, honestly, is just part of it. Uh, The first time I ever skateboarded, I actually still have the scar from the first time (laughs) I ever skateboarded. Um, It was like sixth grade, and uh, there was a pity board, this bright orange pity board. And I just, I'd never been on one before, so I didn't know, like, anything at all you had to do. And literally, as soon as I step on, it just, like, flies out from under me and I just land on my elbow get this huge gash and it just like never went away (laughs) oh uh yeah that sounds very painful and probably thank god nobody had a video recording you of that right but yeah that falling is just part of it it's something everybody does like every day probably (laughs) (laughs) Now, I will say I enjoy my rollerblades. I do go to the skating rink on occasion. Well, now with COVID, I don't. But I will mm-hmm. get on my rollerblades and, you know, go for a, a spin around the block or something. That's always fun to me. So, but Yeah, you- my daughter rollerblades. Aww. You ever go? <laughs> so you're riding your skateboard and she's riding her rollerblades. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> Oh, that's so adorable. And no, mm-hmm. I don't think my fur baby would appreciate being on a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a dog or a cat? I have a dog. His name is Mr. Fletcher. Uh, I have, have you seen any of those videos of the skateboarding animals? I've seen like so many videos of dogs skateboarding. My dog doesn't even like car rides, so I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't be him. <laughs> no, no, he's perfectly fine with just being walked and petted. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, Latasha, what was one of the first tricks you learned? Um, like most skaters, it was an ollie because, like, the ollie is like the the base of almost every trick that you have to do, and then you like move on from there. Um, I'd say after that, it's probably like pop shove it and then like board slides. See, I couldn't even make it that far. Like I said, after my <laughs> kind of like Charlie Brown epic fail, <laughs> <laughs> right. I left that with it. alone. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had said that kind of like falling and getting injured is kind of like part of the process, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm curious. I'm wondering like how many times did you fail at, like your most favorite trick before you nailed it um honestly I'd say so many times that I lost count (laughs) um like it's weird because like some tricks like you can learn them in one day 
some tricks it takes like three months and then some it's like two years like it's skateboarding is definitely like something you have to like persevere at because you never know like how many times it'll take how many times it'll take wow and that's cool that you kind of broke down a timeline because i in my mind i would think most like big skateboarders it takes them you know probably a day you know to learn their favorite trick you know just Mm -hmm. coming from somebody who does not skateboard and doesn't know the fundamentals and foundation of how it takes to be you know what it takes to be good so Mm -hmm. no it's definitely not like a day I mean it can be but I don't feel like it's like that for most people well especially if you know if you do it to me, it's, it's almost like learning an instrument type of thing. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes everybody's skill level is different, but for some people, they just, they just get it. They just know. But from mm-hmm. somebody who doesn't know, like I said, the business and like what it takes, for me, I would think it took them a day to learn it because I'm like, man, I've been trying for <laughs> three hours and mm-hmm. still <laughs> have got nowhere. Yeah. Some people just make it look so easy, but yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of it is just like building on the things that you've learned in the past and then just like tweaking them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's also kind of like the great part about life. You know, it's it's kind Mm -hmm. of a trial and error approach, but once you get it, it's like, oh my God, this is phenomenal. It's like that little bitty, the little train that could syndrome. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you accomplish it. (laughs) Right. Um, So how many times were you, like, when you were trying to nail a trick that you've been, like, practicing for, for, you know, for months, how many people Mm -hmm. were in your corner saying, keep going, keep going? (laughs) Um, A lot. Like, that's that's one thing about the skate community. Like, like, I feel like we have, like, such good teamwork. Like, it's, it's very supportive. And that's good. I mean, you know, it takes a village to raise someone, you know, yet alone it takes to me a a positive community to uplift also and, mm-hmm. and keep, you know, pushing forward. So I, I think that's really cool though. I'm glad that you had that experience. So mm-hmm. Latasha, let's talk about your business. So your skateboarding company is called Proper Gnaw, right? Yes. So kind of like, how did you come up with the name behind it? Um, Well, I threw a different, uh, a few different word combinations around, but then I decided on proper gnarly, because like, well, gnarly is like this older, like, word that skaters kind of use, like, short for gnarly. It just means something that's like, really cool, or like, like, radical, or like, dangerous. And then like, proper is doing something like, the right way like doing things like correctly and so I just like kind of combined the two I've heard that term gnarly before and I that's what I thought when I first read the name of your business I said, oh kind of like the old skater mm-hmm. term for gnarly yeah because I remember watching like the old movies with the skaters, like uh, one of my favorite movies on Disney Plus, which I'm so glad they created that app, <laughs> is mm-hmm. um, Brink. Love I love that movie, Brink. Yes, so did I. Um, that guy in that movie was like one of my first crushes. That's hilarious. Oh, you're talking <laughs> about Eric Von Detten? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can relate on that. <laughs> that was a great yeah. freaking movie. Like. I would say one thing I can appreciate about the older Disney movies, especially, you know, from like the the 90s to the early 2000s, is that they had a lot of diversity and also they Mm -hmm. taught you something. You know, not to say that um, the movies of today don't, but I felt like then the movies were a lot simpler. Definitely. Like, you could they always had like a positive message whether it was like friendship or just like caring for other people teamwork stuff like that yes and brink to me had a lot of core themes friendship mm-hmm. loyalty family 
communication. I mean, just a lot of things I can dive into in another episode, but just the overall great movie. And, and the cool mm-hmm. thing is that it took this idea around skating and it incorporated mm-hmm. all of these themes. It's a very well crafted yeah. movie. I can watch, you know what? I might actually take time to watch that shortly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that'd be a good idea. Um um there's a, another really good skating movie I just watched. It's newer. It's um called Mid 90s and it was so good. Mid 90s? Okay. I'm about mm-hmm. to I have to check into that cuz I, you know, like I said, I can watch skateboarders now cuz I refuse to uh try to get it on the, the bandwagon <laughs> there. Um mm-hmm. so no. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a no on that well if you ever decide to change your mind just let me know <laughs> so I mean is it I guess that goes into another question I have is it ever are you ever too old to learn how to skateboard um I don't think so um I feel like I know like people of all ages that skateboard um it's probably harder if you wait until you're older to start just depending on like how active you've been throughout your whole like throughout your life but i don't think there there's an age limit on it like um i'm in this facebook group it's called very old skateboarders and um (laughs) one 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 of the ladies that started was like 56 and the other lady was like in her 60s and they're out there like longboarding and skateboarding and like learning stuff so I mean if they can do it I'm sure other people could see I think for me I I may have to get with you on this and you'll have to put like (laughs) there's such thing as training wheels on skateboards (laughs) um I don't think so but uh, I have seen these uh skateboards for like really small babies that have like a handle on them that the parent can like push them around with. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe look into those. <laughs> See, that would be me. I'd be kind of like that adult when you go to the swimming lessons with all the floaties <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'd be like Just that like with pads that. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> pads, helmet, uh, probably a... Uh, a full like you know that game where people get into like that little like dome and they like yeah uh, hit each other with it I'd be <laughs> in one of those yes. <laughs> so that way at least if I fall I can bounce down the street <laughs> <laughs> like wrap yourself with like bubble wrap or something <laughs> oh, yeah. prevent injury right <laughs> <laughs> that you know I may have to reconsider that maybe <laughs> Let me ask you kind of this too, Latasha. You know, you grew up in mm-hmm. kind of, you're from the green area, green Ohio. Greenville. Right? Greenville. Greenville. And mm-hmm. so, you know, when you were learning how to skateboard, were you like the only person who looked like you in your area of skateboarding? Yeah, definitely. Um, the area is uh, actually not very diverse at all until recent years. Um, I was like the only black kid in my class for like most of uh, my school years until like middle school. So yeah, definitely the only black person and most of the time the only woman at the skate park. Wow, I mean that's uh, I'm sure that you probably got called Oreo a lot. Mhm, definitely. Yeah, that yep, was that my, uh, because of skateboarding. And because of uh, my, my, like, taste in music, I used to be, like, really into, like, metal back in the day. Me too. Me too. I still am. Nice. Still yeah, am. Yeah, same. <laughs> still am. I am a concert junkie for life. I mean. Me too. And that's, that's one thing that I really miss about quarantine because, oh. like, it's like, when, when's the next concert going to be? Like, when can I safely attend a concert again? Because I'm one of those people that likes to go at least like every few months, and yeah, I can't. <laughs> See me if I could, I'd go, you know, weekly if I could. If I had a, a credit card with no limit, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, you know, I'm kind of disappointed because I had several concerts this year that I was supposed to attend. Um, I had mm-hmm. uh, Disturbed. I had 
uh, Alanis Morissette, Nickelback, um, oh. Corn. I had Bad Wolves. I mean, I had so many. It was so sad because Blossom had to refund me like eight hundred dollars. Wow. I bought insurance on those tickets because I'm like, I didn't spend some money and I ain't trying to <laughs> be, you know, SOL, no pun right. <laughs> and it. <laughs> so yeah. how cool is that to have a pretty much something that's known as a predominantly white thing to have it as your own, you know? And especially right now with everything that's currently going on. I'm sure you've probably been getting a lot of inquiries, right, Latasha, from different people and... Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it, with everything that's going on right now, I feel like um, a lot of people are trying to support Black businesses. And so I feel like that's definitely helped me out here in the short term. Yeah, and def and so how... How many orders are you trying to fulfill per week now since, you know, everything that has occurred? Um, right now, it's like about 700. And oh. like before, before all this, it was like, it was like maybe like 50. Cool. And yeah, it's just, really changed a lot here in the past like month or so and, like every day it's like more and more and I'm just like uh like I actually the the guys that helped me uh print my board they had to like put me on a call the other day because they're like uh what's going on over there like we're gonna have to like change some stuff in the factory to like allocate for these numbers that we're getting now wow I mean, and that's good for you, right? But at the same time, like you said, you're kind of like, you're the only one that does a lot of your stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's good, but it's definitely stressful. <laughs> and Latasha, you know, let's talk about being a business owner. I mean, kind of like what is, especially right now with the influx of orders because everybody's trying to support black owned businesses. I mean, outside of the influx of business, what are some other challenges that you are currently facing as well? Um, well, honestly, just everything that's going on in the world right now with like COVID and like the protests and stuff, like I had to take like a, a social media break, like when George Floyd and all that first happened because like every social media account that I was on, like my whole timeline of that video and um, people don't re really realize like how much that affects others, like seeing that all the time. And like, especially if you're a black person, like, I don't know about you, but like, I feel like those images, like they just like stick with you. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to like avoid watching them at all costs. Um, and then there was like the Breonna Taylor thing and how like she didn't even like do anything. And I don't know, like the fact that her like murderers are still free is like appalling. And, you know, I've been in like debates with people recently, you know, like lost some friendships and yeah, everything's just, I don't know. It's, it's just like a turning point kind of for like the black community, I feel like, and just kind of like affecting everybody. Well, and then you hit the nail on the head. Everybody's been sharing it on their social media almost every day, even if it's not directly a, a photo of George Floyd or Breonna Taylor or Ahmaud Arbery, you know, or some mm -hmm. of the other ones. It's that vicarious trauma that mm -hmm. continues to linger because they're constantly sharing it. So it's like you can't escape it. Mm hmm you know, whether it's on social media, then you go down the street, people are talking about it, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like you can't avoid it. You almost have to become Patrick from SpongeBob and stay under a rock <laughs> and just, you know, yeah. surround yourself with your own, you know, positive mantras or, you know, your artwork to kind of like get away from all of the constant negativity associated with all of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, like, even when you have a business, it's hard to turn away from it because 
like something I've noticed about a lot of businesses, it's like you either have to like make a statement for it or you have to like make a statement like against it and what whatever you say regarding it is gonna like it's gonna affect your business also. So Yes, and I was gonna ask about that too because like you said, whether you stand for it or against it, you can't meet people in the middle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't, you can't just stay silent. <laughs> well, and then you, you can't stay silent because if you do, they say, oh, silence is also the enemy. Mm -hmm. But, but it's like, like silence is violence. Right. But it's like at the same <laughs> time, you know, people need a break right i mean yeah. like you said you had to take a social media break i go on social media strike all the time natasha like people may mm -hmm, see the have to. Mean dot on my facebook <laughs> <laughs> that i'm online but i'm not scrolling through my feed mm -hmm. most of the time yeah, I, I hate up. how it does that yeah i hate how it does that because like people will think you're online but it's like no i'm really not <laughs> right and see me i'm just catching up on messages because people you know, message me either, you know, about the show or like, you know, other friends who are, you know, connecting with me, sending me messages and whatnot. But I'm not scrolling through my feed because I know what's in there. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like trash, you know. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, I mean, for me, you know, it's like I've learned to kind of set those, like I said in the very beginning of the show, is those healthy boundaries. Because mm -hmm. social media will drive you crazy. It will. Yeah, I uh, I had to turn my notifications off this week because just like, I was just like constantly checking them. And I was like, wait a minute, I got to chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, and it's, and sometimes it's for your own health and people don't, I feel like sometimes people forget that, you know, that you're human mm -hmm. too. You're not just a business owner, a CEO of a company. No, I'm a person. Like I have a family. You know, I have mm -hmm. my own life outside of my business. Like, it's like, cut me some mm -hmm. slack here, you know? Right. Yeah. That's just like... Yeah, people definitely don't realize what all goes into it. Well, and that's like, you know, sometimes for me, the issue I have is, you know, being a producer and also a podcaster myself and radio host, I feel like sometimes people forget that... I have a life too, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm not just, you know, doing all this 24 seven. And like I said, too, it becomes addictive because I'm always right. like, Oh my God, who's my next guest. But then I have to set those boundaries. Like, no, take a break. Don't turn on that computer. Don't set up <laughs> that remote kit. Don't check no emails. None of that. Mm -hmm. Because it's important yep. to rest and regroup. That way, when, when I'm ready to record my next episode, I can give it my all and not, you know, 70%. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, I, I applaud you for putting those notifications on mute because sometimes I just turn my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to. So, Latasha, you know, if one of our um, listeners was interested in, you know, purchasing, you know, either a skateboard for themselves or, you know, any of your other apparel, what's the, your website that they can go-to? Um, right now, it's just on my site. It's pipernar.com. Um, I've got some shops that I just started wholesaling with, but um, and I'll also be putting like a list on my website that has all those names and address so that for people that want to purchase my boards in person, they can go there. That should be up within like the next week or so. Well, that's awesome. That's amazing. I mean, because I definitely would love to. Um, like I said, even though I probably will not be riding it unless I put that little training wheels on it or something <laughs> until I can learn like the basics, you know. So mm -hmm. talk, while we're on the topic of, you know, your boards and stuff, can you talk about like the first time when you knew you wanted to create your own skateboard? Like how did that process go? Did you actually like purchase a skateboard that was already put together from like the board and the wood and the wheels and stuff kind of talk about that process a little bit um well I'd already had my own board um 
And then, you know, after, like, using the board for a certain amount of time, like, you're doing, like, board slides and stuff, like, the, the paint starts wearing away, and then it's, like, kind of blank in the middle. So I had uh, repainted it with my own art, and I was like, you know, this looks kind of cool. And I was already doing t-shirts at the time, because when I first started Proper I was just doing t-shirts before I went into the skateboards. And I was like, well, let me try this. And then um, I uh, did it, did, did the drawing on paper and scanned it. And then um, there's this company that would like print them for you like one at a time. So I had that done and sent to my house and I was like, okay, this looks cool. And just went on from there. That's really cool. You started off on t-shirts. So kind of like your t-shirt designs, a lot of them I'm, I want to assume we're on your skateboards now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I right now I do uh, my designs on skateboards, t-shirts, and my art prints. Cause like some people they might not want the skateboard, they might want to wear it on the t-shirt, or some people they just might want to hang it on their wall. So they have options. <laughs> That's really cool. Cause see, I thought maybe you you kind of built it from scratch. You know, like you purchase like the board and then you know you bought the specific wheels you know and different things like that I'm like oh well this is interesting um well I that's how I did before but um yeah no now I have a company that works with me where I do all the designing and then they do all the cutting and shaping and put the art and they like uh, print the art on the boards. Well, then, you know, like you said too, that's very, you know, time saving for you as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't that's have to worry about <laughs> going into your garage or whatever room you were using. Yeah, to... going into the wood shop. <laughs> so when you first put your design on a skateboard yourself, um, Kind of what did you use? Did you use like a wood burning kit? Did you use spray paint or how did that work? Um, I used acrylic paint and then when um, you're done with it, you just put like a clear coat of spray paint over it. And generally how, how long did that first board kind of last? Like the paint and stuff on it? Um, not very long because <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like experimenting. And yeah, it started like flaking off. And that's when I realized, okay, we gotta, I gotta find something more like durable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and then too, let me ask you this as an artist, now that you have a company that, you know, puts the designs and things on the skateboards, t-shirts and stuff for you. Um, do you feel like sometimes that like, takes away from your creativity sometimes? Um, no, honestly, I feel like it adds to my creativity because now I have like more free time to create more things. Like when I first started out with the t-shirts, like I had my own little like screen printing thing in my room and with like all the ink and stuff. And I'd have to do it like one by one and it just kind of like took the fun out of everything so definitely having somebody else help with that gives me more time to be creative and, and that's cool that you said it because sometimes you know i do all my own edits and things for my show i don't have mm -hmm. you know somebody doing it for me and like sometimes i wish i had somebody going through and and you know doing the edits but at the same time i enjoy listening to the bloopers. I enjoy listening to all of the different hiccups in the show because for me, that is a learning tool for me sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because I love going back and listening to things that I've said. And I'm like, did I really just say that? <laughs> <laughs> so and that's cool though, because like you have, at least you have the power to like edit that out. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. And, and sometimes I leave them in just, you know, for a good laugh you know um, mm -hmm. just for my own you know thing so it, it it's cool it, it really is cool and um, I don't think anytime soon I will hire anybody to do 
my stuff. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so we're going to yeah, take sometimes another. When you, oh, but, I was going to say, like, sometimes when you own your own business, like, it's hard to uh, pass things off onto other people because it's like your baby and like you want to do all of it because like you want to make sure that it's right well absolutely you're you're exactly right and nobody's gonna do it as good as you so Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's the other thing I'm very funny about that well thank you again Latasha for joining me remotely on you know kind of like a busy day for you because I'm sure like you said you got like 700 plus something orders (laughs) to fulfill for clients who were (laughs) eagerly waiting thank you (laughs) so you know so Latasha let me ask you this about your website so I went on there and I kind of like poked around on some of your products and whatnot and when I came Mm -hmm. to your bio on your website it says I set out to create hand-drawn designs and bold statement pieces that aren't just things to wear or ride on they're works of my art so can you go a little bit more into that statement that you made um, well, something that I noticed about a lot of bigger skate skate brands is like the designs are kind of basic. Um, I mean, there's some that are creative, but like a lot, of, like once they get to like a certain point, they just slap their brand name and logo on a board and just do it in like a bunch of different colors. And that's it. And I couldn't really find anything that like fit my style. Uh, like I'm the type of person who likes to like always look on point like have my stuff match and like go together so um I don't know I just wanted to be different than the other skate brands with just like my logo and you know just put my art on it instead um I went to art school and I had planned on pursuing a career as an artist like art is like my true love after skateboarding and so yeah I just wanted to uh create skateboards that weren't just for writing but like that looked good also well and like you said you know to kind of have a statement attached to it not just oh here you go here's you know focus 2.0 on you mm-hmm. know a board mm-hmm. yeah I, I feel like a lot of of skate designs kind of look the same and then like definitely when it comes to like black women and like representation like a lot of my art revolves around that and you know just to see like a a black woman on a skateboard like you know that's something new and different yes and that's what I really liked because I looked through all of your designs and I said wow this is very unique and different you know black one you know black women in a different profession not just in the professional Mm -hmm. realm but also in the alternative scene whether it's you know tattoo artists anime you know artists whatever you can think of so that's what I really appreciated about looking at your skateboards and your artwork is that representation so definitely Mm -hmm. keep up the great work I love it you know I hope that you know some of our listeners definitely check out your work and you know maybe make a purchase you know yeah yeah thank you I mean, because I think now with the current situation that we're in, I think representation is definitely important in all avenues, right? Not just in the professional realm, but also in, you know, the artist area. Because there's so Mm -hmm. many talented artists. And I mean, and you especially jumping into a very, very predominantly white industry and also Mm -hmm. a very heavily male driven industry. You know, that, that speaks volumes. That speaks volumes about your character. Yeah. You know, that also speaks that you're, you're fearless and that, you know, you're making a bold statement. Like, hey. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that. Yeah, there's, I've definitely, I like, I've been brought to tears, like, over some of the, the messages and comments I've gotten this past week when it comes to representation. Like, just so many girls that skate and then like moms of girls that skate and they that have reached out to me and it's just like crazy because I didn't I didn't really think that what I was doing like meant that much but I don't know I guess it does to some people so well yeah and then like I said you're fearless and a lot of people I think have that fear of being judged 
-hmm. And so they, they're not comfortable jumping into something that's quote unquote foreign or different. They have the idea, mm -hmm. but they don't take the action to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta let that fear go. <laughs> so I applaud it. Well, you know, once again, Latasha, I thank you for coming on. We're about to wrap up here. So what advice can you leave with our listeners today, whether it's, you know, from a business level of being a CEO and an owner, or just, you know, jumping into the arena and letting fear go? Um, I'd say um, just never give up. Um, try new things. Um, don't let people that like doubt you get to you and just, just stick to your values and just keep having fun with whatever you're doing. Um, don't let people tell you like, oh, there's like a certain way you got to live or like there's a certain path, like you got to follow to succeed. Just follow your heart and take your, make your own path and people will notice that. 